Okay, I'm going to start with the money shot, as they say. That, I am going to tell you right now, is a bit of light. Okay, these field plates, they're, I'm, and I'm going to explain every bit of this in excruciating detail in a minute. These discs are fields. This heavy accelerated particle interacted with this field it's stepping down to create its own field and it gave off a portion of a field which in my mind has a portion of a particle and if these are the fields that surround light which they are this is a portion of a light particle Roger once again Mud Fossil University speaking about CERN and the Large Hadron Colliders and so forth, the physicists are unveiling a charming new particle. Now, this is uh, from July 2017, so this is about a year ago almost. Now, this is CERN and uh, they're using the Large Hadron Collider, CERN in Geneva, Switzerland, have discovered a new kind of heavy particle they announced this week at a conference in Venice. Now, I'm not sure about this heavy particle, but what they are doing is they're smashing things together and seeing what comes out. And what it comes down to is uh, they're looking for the tiniest bits of particles. And they're smashing heavy particles together, protons and so forth, and at extreme speeds and seeing what comes out of them. Now, we use light. We just use plain light, not heavy particles like they use. We use electrons. So what we showed was electron neutrinos and a charged particle flowing through the air and creating a magnetic field as it flowed through the air as a regular plate looking disc with dots all over it which is the polarized particles of ether I'll show that in a minute but that's what they're doing here and instead of using heavy particles they should be using what we're using is a light and then they would see the tiniest particles which I'm going to show you right now all right, this is the kind of stuff they do. It's like doing a nuclear explosion to, to take microscopic shots of things. You're going to see a mess, and that's what they see. I'm going to show that I fulfill every single criteria exactly to, to prove the claims I'm going to make. And I'm proving, that I, I'm saying that I have seen the Higgs boson, accelerated light, Cherenkov radiation, electron neutrinos, of course the Higgs field at the tip of the charge carrier, which is the electron, and the quarks. A quark is any of a number of subatomic particles carrying a fractional electric charge postulated as building blocks of hadrons. They go into so many names. It's a piece of, a, of light. We use an elegant method of just using the pulse red laser. That's ether polarized and excited from the magnetic field. We take that same disk and we accelerate it through a venturi and create extreme chaos while the electrons invade each other's regions. As the extreme chaos exits the venturi towards us, these radiated filaments are the particles and they are headed by Higgs fields, which are the polarized ether in the air that surrounds the charged particle it carries that field which has exited after being accelerated and turned into Cherenkov radiation the particle has exited and we do see different colors there is lepton colors they talk about I believe they're lepton colors that uh, may pay a place here we have extremely highly accelerated particles occasionally and they do some very interesting things 
that extremely white particle came down here as a high energy particle accelerated and moving faster than the other particles and, and fields and the field crashed into this field creating its own stepped down field and giving off a portion of a field and therefore highly likely that that is a quark. If these are light fields and there's a particle at the center creating that field as it moves through the atmosphere and when they crash together that is the particle given off which obviously is a reduced particle in my mind. I don't think it's going to grow to that same size but I can't guarantee that either. Okay, this is, this is the glowy white of cherry and cough radiation, which is what I showed in our stuff, too. All right, there it is right there. Electron neutrino. The electron's coming in extremely high energy. It hits a, a region that it, it's, it, it can't just slide through, like over here. And it is smashing into that region, creating these cones. Exactly what I showed you. And, and, then they, and, and this is because it's electrons. No. Cherenkov radiation from the electron shower. I showed you that. Produced by an electron neutrino event, produces multiple cones and therefore a diffuse ring in the detector array. That's exactly what I showed. And the reason it does this is because it's accelerated, which is exactly what I showed. And it creates Cherenkov radiation, which is exactly what I showed, the white. And it creates a a shower, which is exactly what I showed, which is that electron shower, and it creates those fields that head the charged particle carriers, which would be these fields. I believe this is the particle exiting from the accelerator facing sort of towards us. This is the polarized ether that follows the particle as it flows out. These dots are all the polarized ether that is being impacted by the field effect. And there's colors that play a, a, a part here. Things called leptons. And I believe this may account for these leptons. Uh, and here's what it says about leptons. There are certain theories in which leptons are themselves another color. It's a Petit Salam model where colors are red, blue, green, lilac. Now, that's the colors I'm seeing. You know, red, blue, green, lilac. Um, but this is a hypothetical theory. And then he goes on and says it doesn't have anything to do with your question, whatever, whoever asks the question. If you go a little further, quarks and leptons are the building blocks which build up matter. They're seen as the elementary particles in present standard model. There's six flavors of quarks. And then they go down to up, down, charm, strange, top, bottom, all these kind of... I mean, to me, it's crazy things. But that is the detail that they want to go into. Fine. They can come up with all their different little electron volts and all that business. I, that's not my range. I am looking at the big picture here. And I can see... Um, I can see what they're talking about in, in uh, literal pictures, and and uh, and I'm not sure that they have the the correct model of what they should be looking for because they're looking for what they think they should be looking for instead of what is really there. All right, now there's a lot about quarks and so forth. If you go down, the most meaningful thing down here is to tell us about their characteristics. Now this was meaningful to me. Confinement of quarks, because what I'm seeing is these same colors keep con continuously carried. They don't drift in their colors. Apparently, the color force does not drop off with distance like the other observed forces. That's interesting. These particles exit the accelerator here. They spin to the right, therefore the, the dot drifts to the left, which is apparently the excited particle, that's all we can assume. They come out accelerated in, in um, openness, and then they compress at the end as they enter the restrictions of normal space. 
from all our experiments we have determined that light spins that would be the particle this is the trajectory not actually particles only that's the particle as it spins forward if it hits the bottom but with the particle it goes out this side and it depends on here so it's here 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 so you get these different things if it hits over the top the same thing happens over here it goes here if it's here it's here or here further and further it depends most of them come straight through the center that is the nature of light this is the trajectory that is the wave that they've always talked about and that is the frequency that's the wave that's the particle it's not one or the other it's a particle spinning forward and impressing as a wave this is the accelerator as it leaves the accelerator this is the chaotic condition of the light everybody's forced into each other's regions creating a, a white sort of mess as it steps down it gives one wave or a couple of waves sometimes uh, and then it drops into two of these waves that look like particles. Now, I've analyzed these particles and I think they may consist of some kind of an energy torus which flip-flops back and forth. I see dark, I see light, that's energy and no energy. They flip and they flop, apparently. That's my, my impression. If they do so, they may choke at the neck which creates an inductive reactance which pushes the electricity back into the cavity of the torus which is capacitance and that reactance as it hits the choke again with the restriction of the neck creates inductive reactance and it drives it backwards and it could flip flop because the inductive reactance far exceeds the capacitive reactance in electromotive force Anybody that understands electricity will understand what I'm talking about. Now, it's what we see, and I think I've fulfilled every requirement for the Higgs boson, the particle carrier, the Higgs field, and so forth. And I have all much, 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 much more on this. From uh, this research, I've determined that the Earth is, is highly positive and attracts negative particles which is the electron flood theory the earth is saturated with electrons because the positives have now sucked in every bit of negatives they need which creates heat when the light tries to force its way in now during the day and then um, it also collects in the ionosphere on the outside of the earth trying to penetrate into the earth which is completely loaded with electrons so what does that mean it means if you could take a piece of the earth and turn it into a positive mass instead of having any negatives whatsoever it would push away from the earth and i will display that right now in an atomic bomb Here's what's going to happen. It will go off. At this point, it's, it, here's what happens in, electron, in an atomic bomb. It forces everything together and all the electrons invade each other's space. And at that point, it shoots them all out and they all leave at the same time. And you end up with a positive core. No negatives because they are the tiny particles. They go out in that brilliant light and they also force a shock wave. Now, watch what happens here this is going straight up in the air you have an, a positive core that is now rising this is all reaction to the electrons flowing out through there now this will continue straight up in the air and that is where your positive core is and it is sucking electrons into itself to become stable right now that is anti-gravity a positive core pushing from the earth Okay, my friends, much, much, much more up at Mud Fossil University on YouTube and, of course, Mud Fossil University on Facebook. We have everything, every kind of thing you could think of and more. And we don't shy away from any subject or any topic uh, that there is evidence to, to present. You know, we're not going to go off on silly conspiracy theories and things that there's no evidence to support. So... Come on up and uh, pay attention and see what you think.
All right, thank you. Okay, I just decided I should leave you with this thought, my good friends. If we are being bombarded 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, one half of the Earth is being completely flooded with electrons, which it wants to absorb to a certain point, and then it starts to create heat and, and, and push them out into the atmosphere. But they're still bombarding and trying to be absorbed, and we know plants grow, we know we get hot, all that business. So... I did a calculation that's 1,350 watts per square meter, I believe, per hour, and um, and then you take the number of square meters on the Earth surface, and then um, you know divide it in half, uh, and that's what we're getting hit by every day. And then of course there's the atmosphere. It, it's a it's a huge amount of, and each one of them weighs 0.0055 approximately atomic mass units. And they are electrons, it primarily. I'm sure there's other things hitting. There's, oh, there's tons of things hitting every day. I'm sure that's true. But primarily, we're being hit with solar radiation heat, which is light, and which is electrons. So, what does that mean? The Earth is growing exponentially. So it's growing exponentially. I mean, where are they going? They're not going away. They saw we're black body. No, that's not true at all. We're not black body. Otherwise, the Earth is, is, is absorbing and growing, and animals and plants and everything grow from this source. You know, you don't have any light. You have no growth of plants and, uh, and no growth of plants and, and the biomechanisms that support larger life. You just have nothing. So, this is a little more important than just, you know, wow, there's a new particle and all that. It's so much deeper, but go up to Mudfossil University and, and we get pretty deep up there. And I really want anybody to comment on this that has any, anything of, of significance to say. I'm perfectly willing to work with anyone. All right, thank you.